Hello, so we are back. Finally Friday and our only few days left till Christmas. So what do we have today? We have a nice HP laptop. Every laptop around Christmas are nice laptops. So this is an i5. What this is doing is not coming on. The job is coming from a local repair shop. And the laptop came with no powering on. Uh, 80 pound, no warranty. Usually they say they write on the sticker no warranty when it's a liquid damage job. So I'm expecting on a liquid damage job. Let's plug the charger and see what this nice laptop is doing. So plug in the charger. It's taking nothing. Pressing the power button is taking nothing. And also we have no light on the charger. Hmm? So let's open this uh, laptop quickly and try to have a look inside. And we have the board. And I can't see anything wrong here. Can you spot anything wrong on this uh, laptop? We should take the motherboard out and check on the other side of the board because I can't see liquid damage. Oh, no. Okay, let's plug the charger and see what's happening, yeah? So plug in the charger, what we are checking first? Main power L, yeah, you're right. So the main power L, first we have to check the charging port. Check here, we have the red wires. Checking here and we have 19.9, you can see on the screen. So the voltage is coming in. Then, check that, we have the input circuit, yeah? And the input circuit is like that. You have one MOSFET, second MOSFET, then you have the current sensor. And on the current sensor, you should have 19, and we have nothing. Why we have nothing? So here is a confusion. We have nothing because the MOSFETs are bad. Not necessary. And most likely the MOSFETs are not bad. We don't have 19 because there can be a short circuit on the main power so power rail. So compared with the ground with the beeping multimeter here, and we have no short. Okay, if we have no short, then what is the problem? Shorted MOSFETs, yeah? Let's check the MOSFETs for short. So this one is good. This one is good, so the MOSFETs are not shorted. So what is the next requirement in order the input circuit to work? 25 volts on the gate if the MOSFETs are channel N. Let's have a look. So this is the input circuit, power input circuit. Yeah, plus, and here we have 19. You can see on the screen. Then we have the, the output of this MOSFET. We have 19. Check on the screen. Yeah, can you spot anything wrong here? So one more time. Here we have voltage. Here we have voltage. We are not moving forward to check. Did you spot anything weird here? You have voltage drop on the MOSFET. You have the voltage drop on the MOSFET because you don't have enough voltage on the gate. So how much voltage has to be on the gate? Usually around six volts. But you have the MOSFET on the serial with, with, with the voltage, yeah? So here you have 19. So between the source and the gate, you should have 6 volts. So if the, if the source is 19, the gate has to be 19 plus 6 volts. That means 25 volts. Otherwise, you will have, like on this case, I'm assuming it's low voltage on the gate. That's the reason why I have voltage drop across the MOSFET. So on one side of the MOSFET, we have 19.933. And on the other side of the MOSFET, we have 19.849. And on the gate, we have 18.2. So we don't have 25 volts, we have 18.2. So now you understand why this circuit is not working. Okay, let's check the second MOSFET. The second MOSFET on the gate, we have 0. And that's strange. You know why it's strange? Because those gates usually are connected together. But weird, this is very strange. Here we have no voltage on the gate. So what we are doing next? Next, we are moving 
and try to find the power management chip, the chip which is managing this input circuit, and the chip which is also managing the battery charging, yeah? So what is this chip? Well, I don't think it's on this side of the board. Probably it's on the other side of the board, because I can't see it here. We have to check for the BQ chip. No, I can't see it. So we do have to take the motherboard out. And the motherboard is out. Yeah, check here, yeah? And check there. We can see some liquid damage. Uh, liquid damage here, liquid damage here, liquid damage here. Yeah, this is a liquid damage job. And what do you think? Where do you think is the liquid damage? Exactly on the BQ chip. Okay, so check here. This is the BQ chip, the power management chip, and it's all water damage. You can see it. Then we have some liquid damage here. Then this is bad. We have liquid damage on the on the CPU uh, power supply drivers. Then we have liquid damage here. The EC chip is looking fine. We don't have anything. The 3.3 LDO is looking fine. We don't have problems. Here we have a little bit of liquid damage, but this is not important because we don't have components here. Here we have a little bit of liquid damage. Here, here here and here okay let's clean it let's clean let's use a little bit of alcohol let's see what we can do so first one here and the connector has a little bit of liquid damage let me check the cable uh, the cable is fine so, alcohol is a propylic alcohol. Good, and here, good, and here, good, and here, perfect, here, perfect, here. Perfect. Here. Here. Okay, this is sweet liquid or not? No, it's not sweet. And here a little bit. Perfect, that's all right. Yeah, that's all. It's all clean. You know what I want to do? I want just a shorty flow on this BQ chip. Yeah? Because, uh, check that, we have two pins here. Let me dry. Yeah, I want a shorty flow. I want rosin everywhere. Liquid rosin. Rosin is a good isolator. Liquid rosin everywhere. Here, here. Hmm? It is everywhere? It is. Yeah. Just a short flow on the BQ chip. Yeah, perfect, yeah, and the chip is moving, perfect. And I believe we are fine, so what do you think?
Okay, perfect. That is kind of important chip. Perfect, perfect. So now the motherboard it will work? That's a very good question. Very good one. But we have to believe in the Christmas magic. Let me bring back the laptop. If it's not working, we can start checking different things, yeah? But everything looks fine. Uh, I'm still worried about the missing voltage on the second BQ chip. And that can be, you know, a corroded resistor. Can be. But we're going to see now. So what do I want? I want only the the charging port connected that's all only the charging port let's plug the charger so plug in the charger i seen 10 milliamps there huh let's check the the main power rail so the main power rail is check on the screen 19.9 what about the input circuit so uh, let's go under the microscope just to understand. So now on the input circuit, what do we have? On the input, we have 19.934. At the output, we have 19. Point, okay, that's bad. And on the gate, we have 18.1. Okay, that's bad. So even if we have the voltage on the main power rail, it's still bad. But check here, the second MOSFET, 19.861, 19.861. And on the gate, we have, check that. Yeah. What would we have on the gate? We can't even see. Yeah? Check there what we have on the gate. 25.7, you can see. So the problem is, on this gate, all I have is 18 volts. Now, I know the schematic already of this circuit. So I can go back on the other side of the motherboard and dig in. Or we can just fix the problem now. How we can fix the problem? Very simple. Using a proper calibrated wire. Yes. You're right. So what do we need in order to fix this? We need a little bit of rosin, obviously, sorry, in rosin. We need a little bit of rosin here and here. Perfect, that's all what you need. And now we need a wire. We need a wire from here. Till here. Mm -hmm. Let's settle this wire here. Perfect. Perfect. What was that? Anyone said dodgy? No, this is not dodgy. No. This is called, you know the schematic already, and you know that's how, how, how it has to be. So plug in the charger back. Let's check together. So what do we have now? On this gate, we have... On this gate, we have 3 volts. LOL. <laughs> LOL! 3 volts! Ah, uh, feels bad, man. Feels bad. Why do we have 2 volts? On the input we have 19. Two volts. Of course our circuit is not working anymore. Okay, feels bad. 
Why my wire is not working? Anyone knows? Okay, let's find the power management chip. It's even better, you know, it's not working, it's even better. Let's find the power management chip. Yeah, so check here. Check here. Uh, yeah, that's the one, yeah. So this is the BQ24780. And that's the schematic, check here on the gates, yeah? The gates are together. Yeah, you're right, you see? So I was not wrong. Check here the schematic, yeah? You see the gate of the first MOSFET is connected together with the gate of the second MOSFET. Then, for a resistor, is going to the AC DRV, yeah? You can see the gates are together. That's the reason why I connected the gates together. <coughs> okay, so what can be wrong here? Either this resistor is corroded, or the first MOSFET is sure between the gate and the source, which I really doubted, but let's check. So gate with the ground is fine. Gate with the source is fine, so it's not shorted. So we have to find the resistor, which is in the serial mode with, uh, with the chip. Yeah, you're right, we have to take the board out, but that's fine. That's okay. Let's find that resistor. AC DRV is pin number four. Okay, so we have to follow this pin. So pin number four is this one. One, two, three, four. Check here. And it's going on the other side of the board somewhere. Okay, so I plug the charger. Let's see what we have there, yeah? So P number four, this one is nothing. Zero volts, 2.2 volts. You can see on the screen. So that's bad. The chip has voltage here. Yeah? has 19.9 .9, the input voltage can be a doji capacitor can be you know which one this one so if we can find this capacitor most likely one of those capacitor is doji because this MOSFET the gate had 25 volts but as soon as we shorted with this gate uh, the voltage goes away so I'm assuming this schematic is not right with what we have here. I'm assuming it's a resistor somewhere here. So what is the solution? The solution is very simple. Because uh, you don't know where, where are those components. And can be anywhere. You know, if you have two, two capacitor, one resistor can be anywhere. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to desolder this wire. That's what I'm going to do. Perfect. Yeah, so the wire is desoldered. I'm going to connect the charger. Now let's check the voltage together. So here I still have 25. Here. Yeah, I have one over 20 volts. So uh, check here, yeah? What is the voltage? 25 volts, you can see on the screen. Good, good. Okay, I unplug the charger. I will take the power supply, I will switch it to 25 volts. And I will come with the ground here, okay? And with the plus here. Wait, it's smoking. One second. Lol, something blow up. Something blow up. Ah. 
I felt semiconductor smell, I swear. This one. It was smoking. I can't see. I can't see anything. Let's try it one more time. Let's try it one more time. So ground here. Okay, whatever blow up is not short anymore. Now let's solder that wire back. But something blew up, 100%. Let's solder this wire back. Not sure if you've seen the smoke, but it was smoke. Let's switch the power supply to 19 volts. Plug in the charger. Good, let's check the voltage. And on the gate, we have 17, lol. I mean, what's wrong with this one? Seventeen volts is better than before, but still not perfect. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna desolder this thingy, and we have to find out what smoked on the motherboard. We blow up the BK chip. No way. Here we have twenty-five, yeah, and here we have eighteen. You know what? I'm not gonna search for. Uh, a strange thing, yeah? So what I'm gonna do right now? No, this can be a waste of time, you know what I mean? Can be a waste of time. Because can be a truck, can be a capacitor, which is partial shorted, can be a chip, I felt like, you know, like a weird smell. So what we are doing right now, is called tuning, yeah? So we are improving this thingy. So when the next liquid damage it will be, this will not happen again. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, so we disconnect the track. We disconnect the track. Perfect. Now let me solder the wire. Perfect, so the wire is soldered exactly on the gate of the MOSFET. Perfect. Now let's try one more time. So plug in the charger. Plug in the charger. 10 milliamps. We have the light on the charging port. Let's check together the gate of the first MOSFET, right? And on the gate, we have 24.3, you can see, which is fine, which is perfectly fine. So my question is, this laptop, uh, you know, it will work or not? Let me connect the screen, which has to be here, yeah. The power button, the power button, I'm assuming the power button is on the keyboard. Yeah. The keyboard is connected. Good. Plug in the charger. Perfect. Now let's try to power on this laptop. No, the power, the power button is not on the keyboard. 
the power button is here you can see it good pressing the power button and I can't see anything hmm? the laptop it's on yeah so the check here check here it's on we have picture that's crazy it's working huh we fix it we fix it i can't believe the fan is spinning everything is fine now <laughs> The lesson I want you to learn, to keep in mind from this video, is the things doesn't have to be the way someone want to be. You understand? Make your own thing. Because most of the time, most of the laptops, it will be like this. Those are not MacBooks. Yeah, with schematics and everything and board view. You can have this model. In order to find those components from the gates, you need board view. I mean, even the schematic is not enough. You need a board view to see where the components are. So uh, you always you have to find you have to find your way in fixing things. And it's very wrong because I I, I seen on so many videos. I saw it. Do it properly, like the, how the manufacturer done it. And I don't want. I, I'm not even sure if I can, like in a case like this. You know what I mean? So try to find your way in fixing things. And this, this is not dodgy. I can assure you it's not dodgy. This is the schematic. The manufacturer is a different schematic. I don't care. It's about the, what the power management chip manufacturer is saying, yeah? So that's the schematic, which is from the, with the, from the power management chip manufacturer. Okay? I'm just trying to, you know, make be flexible because that's how you learn. Yeah, I mean, even now I have no idea. I I I, I felt smoke, and I have no idea what uh, blow up when I came with twenty five volts on the gate of this most. I have, I, and I don't even care. That's the thing. I don't even care. What I care is about you know having twenty four twenty five volts on that gate. Now I'm curious about a thing. You know, the laptop is charging. Let's see. Let me plug the battery and see if it's charging. So plug in the charger. 10, 60 milliamps is the pre-charge current, okay? 14 milliamps, so the battery is very discharged. This is the pre-charge current and the current, it will go, it will goes up. I'm pretty sure. So check that on the screen, 1.5 amps. And this current is going into the battery. Yeah, you can see, going to zero. Okay, so the job is done. And uh, I know some people that you have a question. Can you short the MOSFET? And the simple answer is no. I mean, on the old laptops, on some laptops, you could do it. And I do have videos doing it. But this chip has inductor short and MOSFET short circuit protection. So you can see in a case of a MOSFET short or inductor short circuit, uh, the overcurrent, it will be sensed by the uh, comparators and uh, the chip, it will stop working. So you have to fix it, sadly, but you have to fix it like, like original. So I'm going to stop here. I will say thank you for watching, like and subscribe if you like the video, and uh, see you on the next one. Bye.